friends. Welcome to episode three of a lovely yarn podcast. This is actually my second time filming in the last 24 hours. We have, I have a co-host today. This is one of our dogs. This is Molly. She's a Shorky. So that's Shih Tzu and Yorkie mix. Um, but anyway, yeah, yesterday I recorded and I had over an hour's worth of footage and then last night I was editing it and I realized that I had my had had my cell phone too close to my microphone during the recording and there was a ton of interference. It was really <laughs> disappointing. Um, so anyway, I, I thought, oh, maybe I can just post it and it'll be okay because it wasn't constant, but it was intermittent and but when I watched when I watched it all I thought no that's just way too much just way too, way too much extra noise so um, it's early in the morning still I think it might be just around 8 o'clock but thankfully we have a, another sunny day today which is awesome um, yesterday honestly I wasn't even in a very good state of mind it was definitely it definitely felt like a Monday yesterday um, it was I don't know what was up with me you know sometimes you just have days like that and typically I don't have days like that but yesterday I did and so did my kids so <laughs> it was an interesting day we had had a really long weekend and we had um, the kids had friends here all weekend and they had gone to a youth activity um, with our church on Saturday and so it was just a busy weekend I think is what it was so we were all kind of tired come Monday um, but we broke up our school day a little bit we went out and took a little hike through the woods and my son has been working on clearing up some springs that are back um, back in the woods so we went back there and him and Lily worked on that while I kind of just hung out and enjoyed the um, beauty of the forest I really do like being out in the woods and um, and the sun was out yesterday so that was nice but anyway so getting back to the beginning um, yeah this is so I'm recording again and hopefully this one works better and hopefully there's no interference my cell phone is way over on the other side of the room so hopefully that doesn't happen but as I said this is episode three and this podcast for those of you who maybe are just coming for the first time this podcast is about mostly knitting um, some crocheting and I also am a spinner so I will also be talking about spinning from time to time and today's episode is going to be featuring all three of those things because I've been working on all three so I think that um, I'll just get started now and I'm going to start with my finished projects I actually have several which is wonderful and um, two of them are projects that I've been working on for a long time so it was nice to get those finished up. So I'm wearing the first finished object. This has been finished for a couple months um, but I wanted to go ahead and just show it on the podcast because I think I posted a picture on Instagram but that was the extent of it. So this is the Ease Pullover by Alicia Plumes and um, I can try to maybe stand up so it's just a very basic pullover that would be a wonderful first sweater project I really believe that it's it's very easy with the raglan decreases or um, yeah and it's just a very it's just stockinette through the body and there are some, there is some shaping around the waist but it's nothing complicated so it would make a really awesome first sweater project and I pretty much followed the pattern except as usual I made the arms and the body length a little bit longer because I have long arms and I'm taller and I let I don't want to have to be tugging down on my sweaters when I wear them so I made that a bit longer and I I did a little bit more shaping in the waist than the pattern called for 
and that is one thing I regret doing. I wish I would have left it less, I wish I would have put less shaping in. So, but I think it's okay. Um, I'm going to wear it a few times and I'm going to see if I'm comfortable in it. And if I'm not, I'm going to probably end up ripping it back, which I so don't want to do. I really don't like ripping back projects. Ugh. But especially when they're done and bound off and all that. However, I do want to make sure that I am comfortable wearing it. So this yarn I actually bought when we were in Portland, Maine, back in August of last year. So we vacation in Bar Harbor every fall and we always split our trip up. It's Bar Harbor is like a 14 hour drive nonstop for us. So what we normally do is um, we like Portland. So we will drive to Portland, which is about an 11 hour drive. So it's still a pretty far drive, um, but we'll get a hotel and stay there overnight. And then the next day, which is typically Saturday, we'll just kind of explore Portland and hang out there. And then we leave um, right around dinner time and we have about a three hour drive to Bar Harbor. So um, Portland has several really nice yarn shops. Uh, last two years ago, we, I went to Knitwit, which was really fun. And actually I went to Knitwit again this past year because I bought this yarn at another very small yarn store and I, oh gosh I wish I remembered the name of it um, it was a mother-daughter team and all the yarn they sold was hand dyed by themselves so this yarn was um, a hand dyed yarn and I don't remember the name if I can find my little tag I'll put it in the in the information in the down bar but I bought this and I thought oh I want to make that sweater the ease pullover it had been in my favorites for a while and so then I realized I don't have the needles with me to make that so then before we left Portland I had Brad drive me over to Knitwit and I bought needles there for the project so yeah um, but anyway that's where I got this yarn so it is from Maine and it is I think it's merino pretty sure it's merino it's very soft and I'm pretty sure it's a super wash Again, I do have the tag. It's downstairs in my studio, and I um, forgot to grab that, so I would have to check that out just to verify that. But yes, yeah, so this is the, um, like I said, the Ease Pullover by Alicia Plumes. If you're looking for a first sweater pattern, this would be perfect for you. It's really easy to knit. Then, moving on, I have another project here that would like to share with you. Now this I have not woven in the ends. That is the only thing that's not done with this. It's already blocked. It just needs the ends woven in. So this gorgeous, it's supposed to be a scarf. This is actually the, I have the pattern right here, I'll show you. The Alpine Frost Scarf by Amy O'Neill Hook. And it was um, an interweave. It was in one of the interweave crochet magazines. So this is a crochet project. The scarf is, I made it much, much larger than what the pattern called for. The pattern called, the, I mean, you can even see just by looking like, so this, the model has it folded in half and then just this side pulled through the loop part of the scarf. So that's very small and you're gonna see when I put this on that this mine is much bigger basically I mean let me see here if I can find one end so I made mine much much longer just keeps going and going and it's a really pretty lace stitch lace crochet stitch and I used a baby alpaca yarn so it's 100% baby alpaca and I think I it's I think I used I did I used two skeins of it so there's quite a bit of yarn here and I just kept going until I ran out of yarn so I would say this is more like a stole or a shawl rather than a scarf because it is very big although this is I would wear it like a scarf so I would wear it like this um, 
it's very soft it's very warm because it is alpaca and um, I love alpaca fiber I used to have alpacas up until last year so I have a lot of raw alpaca fiber in tubs in my basement and I plan on eventually processing all that now I do process it all by hand by myself so it's a very long ordeal um, basically what it consists of is I have to wash it several times which that is you know when you're dealing with natural fibers you have to be very careful you don't felt them so I you know I wash them in my wash tubs in my basement in my laundry room so I wash it several times until you know the fibers is very clean and then I have to spread it out and let it dry and usually the best way to do that is to spread it out into this in the Sun and um, and then after that I have to hand cart it I have hand carters which um, I don't know if everybody knows what those are but they're basically like two paddle brushes and you just comb the fiber and you comb and comb and comb and you do it once and then you do it again and then you do it a third time and you basically you're doing that until the fiber is all lined up and the the like the uh, any areas where it's knotted or anything it's just you just comb all that out so it is a very long process which is why I don't have a lot done in fact I have only completely like I have one skein of my alpaca fiber from one of my animals, uh, Inferno, that I did from start to finish. I have lots of clean fiber, but the carding part is the part that takes the most time. And I would love a drum carter, but they are very expensive. So quite honestly, that's probably not going to happen. Um, I do have a friend who has a drum carter and she told me that I could borrow it, but it's just a matter of making the time to get to get there and, and to take time to, to card all of that fiber. But anyway, so I only have one skein that I have done from start to finish. So from like shearing of the animal to cleaning to carding and to spinning and plying and one skein. And I didn't bring it up with me. Darn, I should have. But Inferno is a white alpaca, so that's a white fiber. But anyway, having said that, so I do like alpaca fiber. The only thing that I'm not crazy about it is it doesn't have memory. It doesn't have a lot of memory. So anything that you make out of pure alpaca, it's going to stretch out and it's not going to go back. Like it's not going to have any memory like, like wool does. So I would never make a sweater out of alpaca. My very first alpaca project I made was, um, I made a hat for Brad out of hand spun alpaca that I had bought off of an alpaca farmer and this was back before we even had our animals and I didn't realize that, like the alpaca didn't have memory so I made this hat for him and it really stretched out after he wore it a couple times so then I mean I mean it really stretched out so I actually ended up felting it and after I felted it then we are we're able to wear it now but that was just a lesson learned but making a scarf out of alpaca fiber is perfectly fine because it doesn't have to keep any really you know specific shape you just wrap it around your neck so having said that yes this is done it is I love it it's very feminine looking um, I don't I mean I don't know how often I'll wear it because I usually dress pretty pretty casual but there are a couple outfits I have that I think would look just fine and actually I think it looks just fine with this sweater even and I have a skirt on today so I think this would be I think this would be fine together so yeah this was it took a little while crocheting is definitely faster than knitting uh, for those of you that do both you probably know that crocheting uses more yarn than knitting and it also is much faster than knitting and so sometimes it's really nice just to delve into a crochet project especially after you know you're if you're working on a knitting project that's been taking a while because crocheting is it's more gratifying in that if the project typically finishes up quicker so that's all I have to say about this. Again, it's the Alpine Frost Scarf. I 
made it much bigger and I don't even remember all the modifications I did because I didn't write anything down. I just kind of went with it. Like I said, I just wanted to use up both skeins of yarn. Okay, and then the next project, I sh actually showed this one on my last podcast. This is the uh, Quince & Co. pattern that I used the Quince & Co. Chickadee uh, with. It's the Cecily shawl. So I linked, I linked, I had a link to this shawl in my last podcast. Um, so let me give, show you this. It's, a, it's just a very simple, symmetrical, triangular shawl. And um, it's just basically rows of garter stitch. So it's pretty mindless. Pretty mindless. It's... Um, yeah, and this is a long time coming because I said, I mentioned this in my last podcast. I started this last May when we were on our way to Tennessee and I somehow messed it up. Like, how do you mess up such a simple pattern? I just, it ended up, I was like over halfway through it. We were in Tennessee and I'm working on it one night and I'm like, why is this, why is this asymmetrical? <laughs> and I realized that I had just put way too many stitches on one side. Um, than I than I should have so I had to rip it all out and then uh, I started it again on our way home on our drive home and then I only got I don't know maybe four inches into the project whatever I showed last podcast is how much I had done so I after that after podcasting this past time I thought I need to get this done so I did I really just kind of worked at it and really focused on this and got it done so this is probably my favorite shape of of a shawl the triangular symmetrical shawls I like them because they're nice and warm and I like the way they they um, lay on my neck I have a, an asymmetrical one that I actually wear quite often but I feel like I'm always adjusting it because it starts to look a little strange so I do like the symmetrical shawls as I said, this is made out of chickadee. The pink color, the light pink, is shell. It's the shell colorway. The um, the reddish color is maple, and this purplish color is damson. This pattern used two skeins of the shell and then one of the other two colors, and I had a little bit left over. Now. I did block this shawl very aggressively. When I finished it, it looked very small. And actually I tried it on and like the edges, the ends of the shawl were actually sitting pretty far up on my shoulder. And I just imagined it falling off and me having to pull it up. So when I blocked it, I blocked it pretty aggressively. I soaked it for about 45 minutes, got it nice and saturated, and then I really pulled it out to um, to block it and now it's really it's perfect it's the perfect length for me so I'm happy with it I'm happy it's done it always feels so good to finish up a project especially one that's been just kind of um, hibernating for a while so it I guess I'm just encouraging you to grab those hibernating projects and get them done you'll be happy that you did or if you're doing one that you really do not even enjoy and it's just causing stress and you know it's not making you happy then rip it out and use that yarn for something else because I've done that as well so yes the Cecily shawl I forget the designers name I will write it in the in the information in the down bar but it is um, I, I was a I think I got it as a kit off of Quince & Co I don't know that they carry this kit anymore but that's, I'm pretty sure that's how I originally bought it as a kit. Okay, so now I have one last finished object that I want to show you. Um, I made, the, this is a pair of socks and I made them for a knit along. Olivia from This Handmade Life is currently hosting a knit along during the months of January and February and you just have to use one of her patterns, or one of her sock patterns, or um, 
Danny from A Little Bobbin's Knits, and maybe Helen Stewart. I can't remember. If you would get onto Instagram and look up at this handmade life, like the at sign, um, you can scroll back and see her post for the knit along. But I made her one of her patterns. This is the Wild Flowers and Honeycomb. Let me make sure, because I always, yes, Wildflowers and Honeycomb. I always forget, is it Honeycomb and Wildflowers or Wildflowers and Honeycomb? But anyway, this is such a pretty pattern. I thoroughly enjoyed these socks. They were so, it was just such a quick pattern. I just loved it so much, and I will definitely be making more of this pattern. I wasn't sure if I would like a lacy sock, but they're still really warm. I haven't actually worn them for a whole day, but I tried them on. And I wore them around the house a little bit. When I make a new pair of socks, I, I don't know about anyone else, but I always like want to just look at them for a while before I actually put them on my feet and start wearing them. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing with these. But I just love this lacy little pattern here. And for the main body of the sock, I used Willow Tree yarn. Um, I used the barn roof colorway. And then for the heels, toes, and cuffs, I used lichen and lace, and I used her huckleberry colorway. And I actually have a lot left. I definitely have enough left that I could even reverse this and do the huckleberry leg and foot and the accents with the barn roof, which I may do that eventually. Right now, I want to move on to a different color. <laughs> but eventually I may do that. This is just, it's really, it's just really gorgeous. Like this barn roof colorway has, um, it's mostly like a grayish blue, but then it also has some specks of reddish orange. And um, yeah, it's just a really, it, I just love these two colors together. And perhaps I can maybe try to show you a little better. You can see what I'm talking about there. So these are, I love these socks. I love this pattern. And this knit along is going through the end of February. And she has some beautiful prizes that she's giving away with it. So you can check that out if you're interested. I probably won't have time to do another pair of socks by the end of this month. So, um, but I did do one and that was my first knit along, which is crazy, but it's true. Okay. So now, now that um, finished objects is done. I want to work. I want to tell you a bit about some uh, works in progress that I have going on. I think there's three of them. The first one I'm going to show you is a pair of socks that I'm working on, and I've been working on those on these. And these are another pair of Hermione's everyday socks. I love this pattern because it's super simple, and yet it gives such a nice warm texture. Um, I have one sock completely done. This is Robin's Roost yarn. She's on Etsy. Colorway, I don't know because I don't have the tag. And then this is what I have left. So I have the leg done. I'm ready to make the heel flap. And um, so I don't really have that much left of this. So I want to I want to focus on this and get it done because these have been in the works since the beginning of January, I think. So I need to just finish them. I, I got sidetracked with the um, socks for the knit along. And so I kind of put these on the back burner for a while, but there's not much left to do. So I need to just focus on that and get it done. So let me put these in my little bag. And then I have another shawl that I've been working on, which I've shown this in the past. This is the farmhouse shawl by Cabin 4. I'm getting really super close to being done with it. I'm on this last garter panel on the bottom, like the really big one. And I think I have something like six more garter ridges to do. And then I will do, I think there's a stockinette border and then the bind off and then 
the fringe and then I'll have to add the fringe. So I'm really close to being done with this. And um, I'm really excited because it is such a warm, cozy shawl. As I previously said, I made one for my sister two Christmases ago, um, and she uses hers, she wears hers all the time, just around the house. It's just a nice, warm, a nice, warm, big, oversized shawl. So I'm not going to really tell you much more about that because there's really not much more to say other than I'm almost there and I plan on finishing this within the next couple of weeks. It feels so good to finish a project, doesn't it? And then it's like the possibilities after that, like what am I going to cast on next? And I have been reminded that I'm running out of knitting time, guys, because it's mid-February and um, my big knitting months are typically like November through, I would say the end of March, maybe mid-April because then I start into gardening and you know when it starts to get warm here in western Pennsylvania I I'm outside much more which means I have less knitting time which is okay because that's just the way that's just how my interests are you know I really love to be outside and I really love to garden and to play in the dirt and to plant flowers and to make our outdoor space just pretty and yet at the same time functional and practical so I have like t my two main hobbies I would say are gardening and knitting or fiber related practices and so I just kind of split them throughout the year that's not to say I won't knit in the summer I do but those projects are typically like socks or other small things because in the summer I don't really want to think about needing warm winter attire because it's kind of like I just want to enjoy the few months of warm sunny weather that we get. Okay in my last work in progress which this will be a work in project for probably years <laughs> is my miter square blanket and I'm only showing this because I added a bunch of squares since last time. I think I showed this blanket on my very first podcast and it's just slowly growing. It's such an easy mindless knit. Um, but I did add a bunch of squares so I want to show you those. So since I last showed this I added this whole strip here plus this blue one on the end. So this is what I've got. Not much. But it makes, it's like a, a lap blanket. <laughs> I can't even imagine having this like as a full size blanket. I feel like that's never going to happen, but I know it is because I've seen other people's grow. And I've actually, I've been really astounded at how some people have made multiple blankets, multiple Afghans. And there were like, they've completed, you know, one or two of these mitered square blankets and then they're doing the granny stripe. I'm like, how do you do that? I don't know. Um, I guess what inspired me to pull this out again over the last couple of weeks is that I had a very nice gift arrive in the mail from Erin. Erin, her, her name on Instagram is Mama to Abigail. Um, and she also has an online shop where she sells her hand dyed yarn. And she, I think she was pretty much on a hiatus from that for a while. And she recently just opened that back up and that her shop name is Holland handmade. And I think her, her web address is hollandhandmadeco.com. I believe that's what it is, but she, I found her podcast. I don't even know how I found her podcast. I think it just came up in one of like the recommended recommended videos for me on my YouTube channel. And so I watched it and then I started following her on Instagram. And shortly after that, I'm talking like a few days after that, she sent me a message on Instagram and asked if I would like to receive some mini skeins of her hand dyed yarn. And I was kind of taken back. I'm like, is she just 
offering these to me for free? Does she like what? <laughs> it was a it was a surprise because I don't believe. I mean, it's I. It was weird to have somebody just. You know, message me out of nowhere and offer to send me something for free. Of course, I was like, yeah, yes, I would love that. I would love that so much. So she sent me five mini skeins of her yarn. Um, she said that she was just, you know, she was doing some practicing because she knew she was going to be starting up her, her, her shop again. So she was just playing. I think she was basically just playing around and stuff and had these skeins and she sent them to a few people and I was one of them. So when I got those in the mail, I immediately got my, my mitered square blanket and started to add them. So I don't have color names. I don't think I don't think any of them were tagged with a name, but I'll just show you. So she sent me this like peachy pink color, and then this multicolored like a rainbow, and then this green one has like greens and blues in it, and um, maybe yeah. So there's some yellowish green too, and then this chestnut colored brown, and. Now these two were something else. And then this blue one that has like blues and some shades of purple in it as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's all of them. So I added those plus I had a couple other ones that I needed to add in as well from like here's the barn roof. And uh, this was my Anne of Green Gables, the colorway that I had purchased off of yarn at home mom. I forget what these two are. Just maybe some minis I had laying around. So, um, yeah, so thank you very much, Erin, if you're watching. I really appreciated that. That was really super sweet of you. And um, it inspired me to pick this back up and to add some squares onto it. So that's always a good thing. But this project is going to be ongoing. And another thing, I, I, when I look at other people's, I feel like their squares are so much bigger than mine. Uh, the pattern I used called for you to cast on 16 stitches, put your stitch marker, and then cast on another 16. So these are 16 by 16. And um, I don't even remember why I picked that particular pattern, but it's, as you can see, they're pretty small squares, like if you compare them to the size of my hand. And it seems to me that a lot of people's squares are bigger. And in a way, I wish mine were bigger because then it would, I'd get more surface area <laughs> per square. But I've already started it, so I'm just going to crack on with this. And it will be very beautiful when it's done. And it's going to just, you know, they call this the cozy, somebody started calling it the cozy memories blanket. And um, I totally get that because I can look here and see all the sock yarns I used and like just remember the socks I made and the ones I gave as gifts like I know that this little square here was um, a pair of socks I knit for my sister because she loves the, the green color um, and then this one was a pair of socks I made for my mom and I have this was um, a pair of socks I made for my best friend Liz and oh here's Lily's this is um Sweet Sparrow Yarns. This was her Clarice colorway, so I made a pair of socks for my daughter Lily out of that. And here's a pair of socks I made for Brad. It's just, it's really cool to be able to look through that and see that and have that memory. So anyway, that's all I have to say about that blanket. Okay, so now I want to show you what I've been working on as far as spinning. And then I'm going to talk about my, um, some projects that I have in my mind to start soon. But let's talk about spinning first. So right now I'm currently spinning for two projects and um, sometimes I spin just to, to spin and I will just spin like a one skein's worth of yarn because typically whenever you buy a package of fiber it comes in um, four ounce increments. And so a one four ounce package of fiber will get me, I don't know, it depends how, how thin I spin it, but usually I'll get, you know, anywhere from 100 to 200 yards of yarn 
depending on, like I said, how thick or thin I spin it. Plus, I always do a two-ply yarn. I have not spun and just left it as a single. So that is another, th like if I would spin it just into singles, I would get more yardage, but I always ply mine together. Um, so sometimes I just spin just a single skein and then it, it would be useful to use for like a hat or a pair of mittens, but you couldn't make a big project with one four ounce package of fiber. However, other times I will buy more and because I have, I want to be able to make more yarn because I have something specific in mind. And that is what I'm spinning right now. So I have this merino, this gray merino. There's quite a bit here. Um, it's so soft. This is non superwash. It's a really beautiful, uh, it's just really beautiful gray. I have, I bought this um, a year or so ago and I've just been slowly working on it, spinning it into, I would say, what would be um, around like a DK weight once it's plied. So let me show you what those skeins are looking like. I have three completed already. And each of these is the, probably anywhere from 275 to 300 yards. So, um, let me see if I can get a close up. There we go. So as you can see, I spun this pretty thin. I spun the singles pretty thin and then I applied them together. So it's a two ply yarn. And um my plan for this, is that focused? My plan for this is to spin enough to make a sweater. <clears throat> so this is probably somewhere from 800 to 900 yards of yarn right here. Um, I'd like to get up around 12 to 1400, which I will definitely be able to do with this amount of fiber. That will not be a problem at all. Um, but they, these three skeins have already been applied and steamed and dried, they are ready to be knitted from. When you spin yarn, you spin your sing singles, which here I'll show you what that looks like. This just happens to be one on my spinning wheel, which is right here. So your singles um, are, well you guys know what singles are, right? You're knitters. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to focus. So the single is just like the fiber spun into a single, a single strand. Okay. And then when I get two bobbins full like this of the same yarn, or, you know, maybe I'll do a marled look and spin it or apply it with something else. But then I take this and the other bobbin and I will apply them together on my spinning wheel. And that's what you get when you have this. It's it's plied, but then you don't you can't use it yet. You have to do like a bath for it, <laughs> and the bath actually just helps to relax the fibers, and um, so that it gets the kinks out. It gets any kinks out that may not have gone out when you plied it, and so you do that. You just soak it basically. You're soaking it to relax it, and then you hang it out to dry. And then after it's completely dry, then you can use that to knit with. So that's what these these three skeins are at that point. So they're ready to be used. I could literally just cast on something with those today. Um, so I'm going to be working on this pile here and um, I will eventually get enough to make a sweater. I don't have a pattern picked out yet. So if any of you are watching that are spinners and you have found a good sweater pattern to use your hand spun with, let me know. I'm slightly nervous about it because, you know, just the nature of hand spun is that you have thicker and thinner areas. It's pretty much impossible to get a completely consistent spin the whole way across like all of the yardage. I would say mine's pretty consistent, but um, 
there are areas that are a bit thicker than others and areas that are a bit thinner than others. And that's just the way it is with hand spun and that's what also gives it its uniqueness. So I'm not complaining about that. I think it will make a very nice sweater. I just want to find the right pattern for it. And then I'm also working on another spinning project and I can show you that. I actually posted a picture of this on Instagram, I think last week. So this fiber is also a non-superwash merino. Merino is a very soft fiber to work with. I feel like it's a very easy fiber to spin, so if you're just learning to spin, merino, pure merino would be a good choice for you because it's not super sticky. Um, it drafts pretty easily. So when I ordered this fiber, I ordered it off of somebody that had previously purchased it. And when she sent it to me, it was kind of a mess. It was in a, in a bag and it was just kind of thrown in there and slightly knotted and just, it was kind of disappointing. But what I ended up doing is I just kind of worked my way through all the fiber and I made it into what I call a little bird nest. <laughs> so it's just little, I just make these little balls of fiber. And you can see how pretty that is. So when I first got this fiber, it was mostly just white with black stripes, but then I pre-drafted it as I was putting it into these little balls. And so that spread the black and white out and now it's more of a gray. It's very, it's very pretty. There we go. So I'm working my way, I, ha I did that, and I'm working my way through this basket. And my original intention was to make, once I saw how this fiber spun, it spun into a marled yarn. And I thought I had already just added Andrea Mowry's Weekender sweater to my Ravelry favorites. And that sweater is the, like the picture, the, the sample that she has on in that pattern picture is a marled yarn. I think it's Brooklyn Tweed. Um, and I almost ordered that yarn. <laughs> and then I started spinning this and I thought, gosh, that looks like I could use that to make that pattern. So then that's what my plan was. I thought I'm going to spin up all this fiber and I'm going to make that sweater. And I actually have two bobbin folds. This is one and then I have another one right here on my spinning wheel, but I, I'm not quite done with it so I, don't, I didn't want to take it off my wheel yet. But as I'm looking here, I'm like, good grief, I am not going to have enough to make a sweater's quantity of this yarn. I have six of these left. Some of them are smaller than others. so. So I think that this is going to have to be for a shawl, which is okay. It's okay. Because I already have all this yarn back here that I'm, I want to make a sweater out of anyway. So I think this will just be, make a really pretty rustic looking shawl. Again, I don't have a specific pattern in mind anymore, but I'm sure that something will inspire me. Now I would like to talk about a couple of projects that I would like to start, that I'd like to cast on, and um, one of these I already talked about last podcast. It's Helen Stewart's The Land of Sweets, Cal, so I'm not going to really like get into a lot about that, but in my intro to this podcast, I had filmed some mini skeins, and those are the ones that I'm going to be using to make this cowl. And I realized that, um, like hers is very colorful. If you look at the picture, it's very colorful. It's got lots of different colors in it. Mine is mostly reds, pinks, and whites. So I have a few here that I'll just pull out. You know, like this is my color scheme for it. And I, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so boring, Amber. You need to do, add more color. And then I thought, no, because honestly, the things I wear the most are the, are the um, knitted things that aren't like really crazy. Um, I really don't have any crazy colored knitting things, come to think of it. But I thought, you know what, just do what you like. 
just do what you like. So what I like right now and what I'm imagining with this cowl is um, just just these colors, these reds, a little bit of brown, pinks, off-whites, some speckles. Yeah, so that's, I'm going to be starting that. I'm Right now, I am winding these mini skeins into balls, which is kind of time consuming. But um, at least I have a couple of these balls wound up that I can start it. Actually, I literally only have two balls wound up. So, but I can start because I'll just start with one of these. And I already laid it out how I wanted it to progress as I knit it. And um, I'm excited to see how that turns out. I think it'll be a really beautiful project. I've really enjoyed looking at everyone's projects on for that pattern on Ravelry. So I look forward to starting that. Again, here's some other just this really nice it's it's mostly an off-white color but it's got little speckles of pink and um, even some yellow and a very like a navy blue and it's so subtle which I love so yes that is going to be I'm going to start that but my goal is to finish my farmhouse shawl first before I start another project I I, that will keep me motivated to get that finished. And so that leads me to the last thing that I'd like to cast on, which before I tell you about that, I want to show you a book. This book, I've had this book for a while, probably three or four years, maybe longer because I lose track of time. This is a crocheting book and it's it would be great for beginners who are just starting out to learn to crochet because it's kind of set up like a workshop. Um, when I bought this, I had already been crocheting for years, so I didn't buy it as a learn to crochet tool. I bought it because I love the aesthetics of this book. This is by Erica Knight, Simple Crocheting, a complete how-to crochet workshop with 20 projects. So basically how this book works is in the beginning, she talks about just the very basics of how to crochet. Um, she talks a little bit about yarn how to hold your knee or your uh, hook, just all the different basic stitches that you need to know. And then she has a stitch library that is, it's, there's not a whole lot of stitches in this book, but I think she features like the really basic ones and then her fa some of her favorites. Um, so the one that is that is inspiring this project that I'm going to do is the woven stitch right here which I always call this the linen stitch and I made a scarf out of the linen stitch in fact let me grab that for you so you can see I really like the look of it so let me grab that for you okay so I made this scarf using the linen stitch and then it has some fringe on it and this is actually made out of a linen and cotton blend yarn. So I don't typically wear this in the winter because it's not super warm, but I will wear this in the spring and even the fall. And I really love the look of linen stitch, the crochet linen stitch. So I, um, I'm going to make a project using that, which I'm going to tell you about in a minute. But I just want to tell you that about this book a little bit because I do really like it. And I, you know, I always like when people share books that they like. I'm a reader. I like books. So I just find that interesting. So she has like this beautiful wheel stitch pattern. And then she has some like square motifs and circle ones. And then it gets into the projects. And it starts with your very basic dishcloth. This would be like your first project if you were just learning to crochet. And it just kind of advances through. Um, let me show you. These these mitts are really pretty. See, I just love the aesthetic of her of her book. It's very neutral, just feminine, beautiful. I just really like it. And I find this cowl to be very beautiful and even just how she styled it. It's just a really nice book and the paper is really thick and it's a matte finish and I like that about it as well. And um, 
these cute slippers. And I want to show you one more thing. Actually, two more things. I just find that that dog bed just darling. I should totally make one for Molly. Okay. Oh, here we go. This granny square blanket. This was one of the patterns that I saw in this book and I thought, oh, I love that. And of course I could find this on the internet for free. It's just a, basically, it's just a big granny square, but I just love these deep, dark jewel tones that she used. It just looks very vintagey to me. And I definitely want to make a, an afghan like that and she used I'm looking here and in, in, for this pattern she used a um, fingering weight yarn so yeah this um, I really like this book but um, I'm going to use that linen stitch and I want to make myself just a very basic one color scarf that's fringed and I mean, it's going to be super simple. It's going to be a very easy, fast project because it is crochet. It's going to fly, fly by. But I had, I just kind of went to my stash, which is not, I don't have a lot of um, worsted weight yarn in my stash. Most of my stash is fingering weight and I have a lot of bulky, but I want to make this out of worsted weight and I wanted it to be warm. I wanted it to be something I could wear in the winter. And, um, I found a yarn and I started using it and it was just, I didn't like it. It was, the gaps in it were too, were too big. See, the way you make a linen stitch is you do a single crochet and then you chain one, single crochet, chain one, and that goes on and on down the row. And then when you go across that row, like when you go back, you're single crocheting into the chain one space and then your chain one spacing over the previous single crochet. I'm not sure this is making sense, but anyway, what you end up with is a fabric that, well, I can show you because I didn't rip it out completely. This is just some plain navy yarn, but I don't know that you can, if you can see, but it just has the gaps in, yeah, see, look, I didn't really want that. I really wasn't happy with that. And I really wasn't happy with the yarn. So this is what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to buy myself a couple skeins of the O Wool Local. And I love this local yarn. It's made out of alpaca and is it merino? Yeah organic merino and alpaca and it's made from animals in from on farms in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. So it's a very rustic looking yarn. Let me see. I'm going to zoom here and try to focus so you can see how beautiful it is. Okay. Um, it's, it's rustic. It's a single ply. It is, but it's very sticky. It's a very like, it's not, I don't know, is that the right word for it? It's going to fill in gaps well. Let me put it that way. So I really like this color right here. This is Cedarberry. It's a nice tealy blue. Actually, it looks a lot like my sweater I have on. Or I might just go with this navy, which is called Ganoga Falls. I haven't decided. But I think that will make a, um, a nice linen stitch winter sweater. Um, I just, I really love this local yarn, this O Wool Local. And it's, I think it's pretty affordable as well. It's not too over the top. So yeah, if you've never used O Wool, you should check it out. It's definitely a nice option. So that is my plan. I don't know if I'll actually get to it before the end of this knitting season, but we'll see because I definitely want to cast on that land of um, sweets because I already have the yarn for that and I want to finish up my um, farmhouse shawl and this other pair of socks. So that's all that I have to talk about today. Um, it's actually time for me to go get the kids 
moving. I think they're actually already out there. They started some of their schoolwork, but I am a homeschooling mom, so um, I got this started early because I wanted to try to get it done. I have some, I have Bible study this afternoon, and we have our school lessons to do in between, you know, now and then. So I'm going to go do my um, adult responsibilities for the day, and um, maybe I will have time for some knitting later. Probably not until tonight, though. Um, what I've been doing is in the evenings, I am listening to Jane Eyre. It's, I think that's my one of my favorite all-time books. But I'm, right now I'm listening to it on Audible. And the narrator is wonderful. She's such a good narrator. It makes a world of difference when you're listening to a book to listen to one with a good narrator. So at night, what I've been doing is I just kind of lay in bed and knit and listen to Jane Eyre. And before that, it was Pride and Prejudice. I'm just revisiting all of these classics that I read when I was in high school and it's been extremely enjoyable and it's funny how much you forget you know over a well it's been 20 years 20 20 to 25 years since I've read those books so that's just been I so look forward to that in the evening just knitting and listening to um to a book on audible I'm just really loving the classics right now and I'm also reading Harry Potter which isn't going so well <laughs> I love the movies and um, I'm on the first book still and I think the thing is is I just love knitting so much that for me I, I cannot read a book a paper book and flip pages and knit at the same time I know that some people do that but I'm, I'm not one of them so when I knit I really like to have an audible book that I'm listening to because I can do both things so that's what I've been doing so yeah those are my plans for today school lessons Bible study, make dinner, and then maybe tonight some knitting and Jane Eyre. So have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for coming and watching this. It really, you, like, it just really means a lot to me. And if you are so inclined, go ahead and hit the like button and follow along. And again, I just, it, I, like, I really love when you leave comments and you tell me that you've enjoyed it. I really enjoy doing these podcasts. But it's a huge bonus to know that other people are watching them and enjoying them as well. So thank you so much. And um, I just pray you have a wonderful day.